to Monroe that would have uh, a lot of agriculture, uh, university there, community college there, the things you need to really develop a research park, but a very small population. And so what I want to do is kind of go through a few things here that are necessary to put together to make these things work, and then also to give you some ideas on the timing of such things and having making sure the community has realistic expectations. Uh, research parks do not develop overnight. Uh, Thank you so my much. prior life, I was a commercial um, developer, and we developed, uh, a, you may be familiar with the Industriplex in Baton Rouge, right on I-12. And what you normally do in those situations is you buy the land, you, um, you get your permits, you get the engineering done, you design the roads, you have a master plan, and then you go get builders to build buildings, and companies come in there and you lease those buildings to companies, or you build them for the companies. And a research park and is a little bit different from that because you set your uh, parameters on what types of businesses are accepted, and you, and you deal with those, those types of companies, and so you're not competing with the private real estate market by just putting lots on there and bringing in you know, any and every type of business. And so what we've been able to do in Baton Rouge with the LSU Innovation Park is set a list of uh, capabilities that LSU is very strong in. And you take those, 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 those different sciences or those different areas and then you try to build clusters with companies around that. And so very similar here with ULM and Delta is that what we'll do is figure out the strengths of those two colleges and universities and then you build around that. So you can't be what you're, what you're not. You have to be what the community has and what, uh, what the assets in the community are and you build upon those. And so this is just kind of a little outline that I was going to talk about. Um, you know, it's just the relationship with the universities. That is really critical. The association that I'm past president of is the Association of University Research Parks. That university is a critical part of that that really uh, sets you apart from a real estate deal. It's, it's that university connection and building on the strengths of that university and the assets of that university, which are faculty, researchers, and students, and also the equipment and the grants that they bring in that actually spin off technologies. So we'll talk about that uh, relationship in the community. This is a community effort. It is not a specific university effort. It, and so you have to have the entire community uh, as part of this, and that includes having attorneys and CPAs and bankers and all the different assets in the community, plus the industries that Dr. Armstrong mentioned, you know, with uh, the CenturyLink and these, these types of companies that are here, you build upon that. In Baton Rouge, we build upon the petrochemical complex along the Mississippi River and all the things that the oil and gas and the things that we're good at. And uh, the, uh, then the other thing is just talking about the, you know, the, how would you would do this and then the master planning part of it, which would come uh, as you progress. Uh, so it's a kind of a process. You know, you have your pre-development. That's what we're at right now where you're just talking about it. You're formulating ideas. You put together that business plan and then you move into the if it the feasibility says go then you move into the pre-construction construction and then all of a sudden you exit to um, to actually having the park operate there's something uh, I want to just kind of mention uh, everyone probably in the rooms heard about incubators uh, and there's the, the concept about research parks well, the big things that are going on today um, is that they, uh, the Brookings Institute put together a study or a report about innovation districts. And so that's basically um, the new concept, new buzzword, where you just take a university, it could be a hospital, uh, you take an area of town that you call your innovation district, and it's connected with transportation, it's connected with, um, with, um, with uh, the IT services and the internet connections, and then you have a kind of a work, live, and play environment because that's kind of the thing that's that's been really popular as these 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 innovation parks and innovation districts start. And then of course we have incubators, and that's basically space where a uh, where a uh, business has space to operate and actually develop. But the big part of that too is not just real estate; 
It's the counseling that the university, the SBDCs, SCORE, all the assets in the community work with the companies in those incubators to make sure that they get their help and in, in, in what they need to really grow and succeed. And then hopefully you graduate them out into the community and then they move into the research part. And so these are the kinds of things that we're working on in Baton Rouge. Uh, the other thing is a virtual incubator. These are kind of a shared office space where people come in and use it as they need. They don't have a fixed office. They have just tables. They pay a monthly rent just to be there. It's not very expensive, but it helps them formulate the ideas and get some counseling help and then hopefully maybe move into the incubator or get into the research part. Accelerators, you hear a lot about that in the news, and these are basically a similar thing to an incubator, but it's it's kind of a hybrid of the virtual incubator where you don't have a fixed office, but you have a space that you can come into and use it when you need it. And generally with an accelerator, there's money involved. So whoever's running the accelerator might take a startup in and, uh, and they, have, they give them $50,000 and they have six months to generate a company. And if they do, good. If they don't, then they'll move on to the next one. And then makerspace and prototyping centers, this is just where you have 3D printers and the equipment and everything you need there. So one of the key things that, um, in talking to Dr. Armstrong and others in the community, that really the step you're at today, if, if you want to move through with this, is what we've got to do is map the ecosystem here in Monroe in northeast Louisiana to see what, uh, what assets you have here and, and would this work here. Uh, so, you know, what are the existing entrepreneurial patterns? You know, how many business startups do you have? What resources are out there in the system? The companies, the technology and the companies that you have here. You have a good list of companies uh, and, uh, and that's really important to have something around you and, and that can really uh, become a customer for some of the startup companies as well as, uh, as uh, spin out some technologies that, uh, that don't fit their mission. Uh, funding sources, you know, or, or is there uh, venture capitalists, are they angels in the network? Um, are there people who would invest in these startup companies? That's one of the big things. And in Baton Rouge, we do not really have a good venture capital network. Um, you know, we're not Silicon Valley, we're not Boston, we're not uh, these areas that have these very, very high, um, high net worth uh, groups that invest into startup companies. But what we do have in Baton Rouge, and I'm sure that you have it here, is angel investors. These are high net worth individuals who have made money in a whole variety of different industries, and they are interested in investing in startup companies just to really kind of help diversify their portfolio as well as to help these companies grow and help the community grow. So this is something you can do is just try to identify these angels that are uh, are actually out there. And then of course we you make a list of the service providers. I mentioned the SBDCs and the and score and other others like that. Then your attorneys, your CPAs. And one of the things we've been able to do in Baton Rouge is that uh, we've gotten every law firm and every accounting firm in, in town that has uh, become part of our uh, resource provider team to where they will actually meet with a client that we refer them to uh, for one hour free, no charge, just to see what their, their needs are and what their problems are and how they could be addressed. And then when they build them out, they build them out the first eight or ten hours at 25% their normal rate. Then 50% and they keep gradually doing it. We want them to pay, but we want it to be easy. We don't want someone not to use an attorney or not to use an accountant because they can't afford it. And then the, the, the law firms and the accounting firms know that if they help this company grow, that they've got a client for life. So we've really had a lot of success in doing that. Um, again, this is just kind of talking about what are the resources in the community. This is something uh, you probably can all contribute to and, uh, and, and really kind of start even putting names and identifying either companies or people that fit that bill. Then uh, again, this, uh, the this is kind of just the same thing as that we said earlier, but then bringing in the resources, um, you know, with the Louisiana Economic Development. They're always helpful in helping companies 
Uh, they have a bunch of programs for startups. They have a bunch of programs and incentives for companies as you recruit them to the park. And that's the, the other part of the, the incubator research park connection is in the incubator, you're actually creating companies. You're, you're helping companies develop. But the research park is actually designed to uh, attract companies to come into the park, come into this community. And the, also the other part of that is to make sure that they offer services to existing companies to retain them in the community. We don't want the, the companies that are here to leave. So that's another part of it. Uh, an example of LED helping us out was they recruited a company uh, in cybersecurity called Twistlock from Portland, Oregon. And um, they brought them to us at the park and we had some space for them. They started out with five people. They moved here from Portland and now they're hiring Baton Rouge people and LSU graduates and LSU interns and they're ramping up to 25 people. This has all been in three months. And so these are the types of things that are really, really important to your community when you start bringing these families in here. Um, the, uh, the, some of the things I just kind of threw here when I was putting this together, but you know, obviously you've got ULM. Uh, you've got something very strong here in the College of Pharmacy. Um, you know, to really attract uh, some sort of a, uh, a pharmaceutical manufacturing company, doing clinical trials, uh, all these different things exist already. So let's map it, let's put it together, let's find out who the leaders are and bring them into the room and start brainstorming and, and figuring out how we build this ecosystem. So Delta Community College, uh, Chancellor Epps is here, uh, you know, with the campuses they have, nursing, and so some of the things we're seeing here is, uh, is that may be an opportunity in the biomed, life science, pharmaceutical, uh, which quite frankly, Baton Rouge is not really good at that. And we're not, even though we have Pennington Biomedical, which is fabulous, and they do tremendous work in obesity and, um, and diabetes, uh, but we don't have the med schools there. And so a lot of that bio goes through New Orleans in the Bioinnovation Center there. And so what we do is um, we try to take some of the things that Pennington's doing, and it may be uh, the things that we can do in our Pennington incubators, medical devices, medical software. And, you know, the pharmaceutical area is better suited up here with the uh, pharmacy school, which we don't have. And so it's really just mapping all of these things out. Of course, the industries, we talked about CenturyLink, IBM, Ericsson, all of these people that are here, we need to get them into the room and at the table as well because they're going to be a key part of it. So, uh, so just, uh, you know, just putting together this, we'll go uh, and talk to the universities. Uh, who are the rock stars at these universities? Who are the faculty members that are bringing in uh, sponsored research? Uh, what, uh, what are the things that are going on? And I put the whole array up there of, um, you know, with the community colleges and even Louisiana Tech and Grambling to see what, you know, what really can be spun out and put here. Um, the agricultural part of it, that is a huge part of it. Louisiana is an agricultural state. Uh, we're very agriculture in Baton Rouge. Uh, we have a food incubator uh, through the Ag Center. This thing has been an absolute home run. We started about six years ago and we have hundreds of products that are going through there. Uh, it's under the watchful eye of the food science department, uh, so we know that our products coming out of there are food safe, and they meet all the requirements that are necessary. Uh, and so the university is an integral part in being part of all of these types of things. Um, the, uh, uh, the other thing is the Small Business Innovative Research Grants. These are uh, programs that a federal agency like the Department of Defense or NIH would say, I've got a problem, I need a solution. And you try to find small businesses in the state that can solve those problems. We handle that program for the entire state of Louisiana. And so we have clients up in this area, at, at Ruston, at Louisiana Tech, uh, up in Shreveport, at McNeese. You know, so we've got clients, uh, I mean, uh, uh, companies that can compete for and win these SBIR grants. And this is something that we add to the, the program here. And, uh, and that, again, would be working really with the, the universities and finding out who their, their people are that are extremely talented in a certain area that we can pair them with a company and actually co go after these grants. <coughs> so action items, you know, obviously, um, you know, we, we're talking about it today. You've gathered a great group here and to, 
you know, have some side conversations and really kind of take this and start talking and seeing how this can really work for this area. <clears throat> then putting together a business plan. If there was land available, then you talk about maybe having a research park with a small incubator facility there. And, uh, and then just have the concept plan. What is this going to end up like? And also a funding plan. And one of the things that uh, I'm really, uh, I stress when I do consulting around the country is uh, the getting to a self-sustainable model. Uh, I was told in 1988 when I started the Louisiana Business and Technology Center at LSU as the first incubator down there, um, they told me I had two years to be self-sufficient. Uh, I had a subsidy for two years. And then if I couldn't get self-sufficient, then um, I was going to go back to my private businesses. As, and we weren't going to continue that because they weren't going to subsidize it. Well, we were able to develop a model to where we could generate the rents and revenues and contracts fee for service that we could we could keep this thing operating. We are now on November 27th, and I'll, I'll get Dr. Armstrong an invitation that he can send out to everybody. On November 27th in Baton Rouge, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary. We've been self-sufficient and self-funding since then. And uh, it wasn't easy, and <laughs> it required a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, assistance uh, in getting this, ma making this happen. But it can be done. And so I think a subsidy will be necessary in the early years to get, the, uh, get enough companies going and get enough mass and to really where you could do it. You, obviously, you're going to have to find some, some grant money to build buildings or have a, a joint venture developer to have a building because you have to rent space to these companies to grow and develop. And for companies that you recruit, they have to have a place to go. Um, the best practices just from, uh, you know, we, we know what it takes for an incubator and a research park to make it. What all those best practices we can you know, really assist in helping you put that together. And, uh, and then just working with, uh, with our, our local politicians, the, the, you know, on the national level, the senator, um, th this type of help. There is money out there. It's, uh, you have to have a plan to, to, have to actually go out and get it, uh, but, uh, but it, is, it is possible to get something like this started with a lot of help. And of course, Louisiana Economic Development has always been very helpful. Um, in the early stages for us as well. <clears throat> just to give you uh, just a little quick background on um, on where we are in Baton Rouge, you know, we, we developed this this map here, which basically, and you're familiar with Baton Rouge, the this is what we called our innovation district. And at the top, uh, well, let's start at the bottom. The bottom is the LSU Innovation Park. That's what I run for LSU. That's our research park. We're four miles south of LSU's campus, four miles south of Tiger Stadium on Nicholson Drive. So you go from us to the university, uh, well first at, at our place we have the Louisiana National Guard Cyber Security Command and so that's all sitting at our research park property and then you have, um, you have the LSU campus and we were able to attract EA Sports, the video game company, about eight, uh, ten years ago and um, they were at the research park and they had such success in Baton Rouge in the video gaming and getting these, these these employees who are really, really good <coughs> in developing these games. Now we built them their own building on campus. So they move from the park to the campus. And then we have the Water Institute of the Gulf. This is a development that's uh, on the way between LSU and, and downtown Baton Rouge. And then the IBM uh, building in, IB, in, in, uh, in, uh, in downtown Baton Rouge. So that eight mile stretch along the Mississippi River from the Innovation Park up to IBM is, um, is what we call our Innovation District. <coughs> um, at, at LSU over the years, uh, we started with the Louisiana Business and Technology Center. That was our flagship 30-year-old incubator. In 2005, uh, we acquired from Albemarle Chemical Company the Albemarle Research Facility. So I was very fortunate to move the incubator out there in 2005 and they had eight buildings and one building has 40 chemistry labs in it. Well, that is that doesn't exist in Louisiana anywhere. 
and so we were able to really bring in companies that needed this this space and again connecting with the expertise of, of LSU and so we were very fortunate to have that asset um, that has helped us you know jumpstart and really get our research park going uh, the other uh, incubators that we developed over the years the Ag Center food incubator the biotech incubator at, at Pennington and uh, in the student incubator. This is something that I, I know exists at, at Delta as well as at ULM, that these students today are entrepreneurial. They are thinking of businesses. They're running businesses. And the barrier of entry is very small. Back, you know, when I finished LSU in 1970, you know, you had to have money and machinery and factories to start a business. Uh, today, you need a laptop to start a business. These companies, these kids are so creative, and what they're doing is truly amazing. So, just to tell you about our student incubator, uh, we had six kids come to me in 2010. It was in, uh, they were graduating in May, and they came to me right at the start of May, and they said, we're, we, we have these six friends, uh, two of us have jobs, Two of us don't have jobs. Two of us have jobs, but we have to move and leave Louisiana. We don't want to do that. But while we were at LSU, in our classroom project, we set up a company that was doing social media, branding, making videos, uh, doing, uh, developing logos, and we believe that can be a real company. And so we want to do that. And I said, well, okay, well, I brought my business counselors in. We started working with them on a business plan. And we literally, uh, in about a two-week period of time, came up with a plan. They, were, uh, they had really, really good background and credentials. And, uh, and I said, tell you what, we had a company that just graduated out of the incubator. They had a small space. I said, I'll let you have this uh, space for $300 a month. And they said, okay, we can do that. And so they actually, you know, went to the Secretary of State, uh, <coughs> registered their name. Um, that one night, a uh, couple of days before graduation, I get a phone call from, at the time, Lieutenant Governor Jay Darden, who's now the Chief of uh, uh, Commission of Administration for, for the state. Jay calls me up and he calls me Dag. He says, Dag, I know you're helping my son Matt with this business idea but don't help him. If he needs to get a job, go work for somebody else, get off my payroll. He said, don't encourage him. And I said, Jay, I can't do that. I said, they really have a good idea. They're really sharp. And I think they can make it. And he says, look, don't help them. And I said, uh, no, I can't do that. Well, the next conversation I had with uh, Jay about a year and a half after that was, man, I'm sure glad you helped them. <laughs> they, are doing, they are doing seven digit, they're, they're doing over a million dollars a year since 2010, eight years. They've got 26 employees. They're in downtown Baton Rouge. The name of their company is Red Six Media, and they are hitting it out of the ballpark, and it's students. And so, but what it did, it, it put a little, lit a, lit a little light bulb for me saying these kids came to us, but they got to be hundreds of them like that on the LSU campus. We got 35,000 students. And so we started, I sent uh, one of my uh, counselors and you know, to start talking in the classes about if you have a good idea, come start your incubator, uh, your business in our incubator. And this thing launched and went out of control. I mean, it's just really fabulous. But what it did for Baton Rouge and what it did for LSU is that we have created a number of companies uh, while the kid was in college. And so on graduation day, they didn't interview for a job. They didn't leave Baton Rouge. They didn't leave Louisiana because they built a business while they were there and they've hired fellow students. They've hired people in the community. They're buying goods and services from people in the community. And so this has become just an unbelievable success story for us. And, uh, and it's something that is happening here but, you know, unless you put your arms around it and harness it, you'll never know. And, and also, you know, you, Monroe has the same problem we do, is that, you know, when, when, these, when we educate these kids and the company comes in and takes them and they take them away from here, there's a good chance they never come back. So we've got to make sure we keep them here. 
And so that's that's kind of some of the things that we've been able to do there. This is just a picture of our, our food incubator. Again, uh, anytime any of you are in Baton Rouge, give me a call, and I'd love to show you these facilities because really, you know, I can come here and do a presentation and show you some cool pictures, but until you come and you see the companies and you talk to an entrepreneur and what he's doing and you kick the tires and see the equipment and see them making whatever they're making there at the food incubator uh, or in our 3D printer at the Protostripes, um, you know, we're making all kinds of products uh, from auto parts to water filtration parts, medical devices, all of that is being done there. It wouldn't have been done without us. Uh, this uh, just quickly, uh, Navion is a company started by some physicians. Uh, it is a just a communications platform uh, in palliative care. Um, there's, uh, they, they've set up a deal where family, patients can talk to the doctor through the through uh, email communications, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page and know what's happening with the patient. And that's over at the <coughs> next. Um, this is um, this is the our chemistry building back there, Albemarle's research facility, and then that's our property there, that triangular piece, the 200 acres we have for the park, and the National Guard has 50 acres adjacent to it. And then uh, the Emerge Center. This is an um, interesting thing. Uh, this group came to me uh, and said, we want to lease space at the research park. And this is when I said that you know you have to have parameters and which who you allow in and who you don't. Um, I don't know if anyone's here from State Farm Insurance, but if uh, I'm just using that as an example. If State Farm came to me and said, I want to put a call center and a collision repair the, you know, center here, no, I'll help you find a place somewhere else in Baton Rouge, but that doesn't go at the research park. It has to have that research connection with LSU and things that LSU is interested in working on that we're, we're helping students with. And so this, this group came with this autism program and they said, <clears throat> we want to lease space here. We're going to build this state-of-the-art training facility for kids with autism and other hearing disorders. And uh, we need to be at the research park. So I said, well, why? Why do you need to be at the research park? There's plenty of places. You probably get cheaper land somewhere else. And they said, well, we have you know, faculty from special education, from, from psychology, from sociology. Uh, from speech that come in and work with these kids and they observe them and they're doing publications And we have some interns that come in and work as a part-time job And I said well, yeah, that passes the test. So we leased in three acres. They built this eight million dollar building It's their building. I did a 30-year land lease with two 20-year options and today <coughs> they, ha they had to add they leased another acre because they had to put in a parking lot because they have 70 seven zero interns from LSU working there during the semester and so these kids you know are in there working with these autistic kids learning really real world experiences from to carry on what we taught them you know in the classroom and when they interview for jobs they are hired quickly and and had more money because of the experience they picked up just by being here at the research park in the uh, Emerge Center. Uh, interesting medical device, that thing that looks like a little desktop, uh, and that's very small, it's only about this big. <coughs> it's, on, um, it's like a pencil sharpener that you have on your desk, except it destroys needles. And it's for the home diabetic, and anyone that has to have a needle at home, uh, uh, get a shot at home, you have, you're supposed to put it in a sharps container, you're supposed to take it to a place to properly dispose of it. That doesn't really happen. Uh, everybody doesn't do that. And so this thing is that you actually take that needle after you've given yourself an insulin shot or whatever, and you put it in there. It literally has this high intensity arc and it disintegrates the needle and it seals the plastic part. You can throw that away and there's not, nothing to dispose of in the sharps container. Um, they're working now with CVS and Walgreens for flu shots and any other shots you get there. They're working with physician offices and they developed this technology at our innovation park and they came to us.